All right, it's 10 o'clock, so we better get started. Um, I'm Michael Johnson, and I'm sharing this session, but more importantly, this is Matt DiMelio, um, who's going to tell us about Enriched by Simulations. Thank you, Matt. Thanks, Mike, and thanks to the organisers for putting on a great conference, and to the program committee for giving me the opportunity to talk to you today. So as Mike said, the topic of today's talk is Enriched by Simulations. In the abstract, we also talked about uh, enriched symmetric lenses, but uh, due to time constraints, we're just going to focus on the enriched by simulations. So to start with, I think I should give some context for uh, what by simulations are. And I'm going to do that by talking about a specific kind of by simulation, which is by simulation of labeled transition systems. But before I do that, I should tell you a bit about labeled transition systems. So the idea of labeled transition systems is to describe the possible behaviors of discrete processes. So these are a mathematical structure that's uh, quite uh, commonly used in, com in computer science to, to model things because in computer science we study discrete processes. So... Sorry, Matt. There's an awful lot of background noise now. Do you think you guys can do something about it? Is uh, I think the background noise is just people entering the room. Uh, it's, is it? No, it's it's kind of it's different. Uh, oh, someone someone has a microphone on their table that's active. Yeah, so they should all be red. Oh, many okay. thanks. Thank is you that better? A lot. All good now, Valeria. Yes, it is. Thanks a lot. Awesome. Cool. So what was I saying? Ah, yes, okay. So what, what is a labeled transition system? So it consists of a set S of states, a set A of actions or labels, and for each action, a transition relation on the set S. So the interpretation is if S and S prime are related by the uh, transition relation for an action alpha, then this means that if the system started in state S, then it's possible to perform action alpha and doing so will result in the system ending up in state S prime. So just a very uh, simplified example, uh, we're going to consider a, a transition system modeling a, a vending machine. So here the set of states uh, is just on and off and there's three possible actions. So coin is inserting a coin into the vending machine, biscuit is asking it to dispense a biscuit, and chocolate is asking it to dispense a chocolate. And I've depicted the transition relations as this directed graph. So uh, starting in state off, uh, you can insert a coin, and doing so will make the system go into the on state. And then from the on state, you can either request that it dispense a chocolate or a biscuit, and uh, both of these will take the system back to the off state. So this is a rather simple example, but I hope it sort of gives an idea of how to, to interpret this uh, mathematical structure. So as I said, uh, labeled transition systems are about behaviors of processes. And it's sort of given the interpretation that I just told you, it's possible to define different labeled transition systems which to an external observer have the same behavior and so this is where the notion of by simulation comes about it's about trying to capture some kind of equivalence of labeled transition systems in terms of uh, when an observer when an observer can distinguish between two different processes so here's the definition of strong by simulation uh, which is essentially what, what's written in uh, Milner's Communication and Concurrency, if you want to go and look up more about this, this kind of thing. So if S and T are uh, A-labeled transition systems, a strong by simulation between them is a relation on the sets of, of states, so a subset of S cross T, such that whenever I have a state little s and a state little t that are related by the relation, and from state S, I can perform action alpha uh, to get to a state S prime, then there should exist a state 
t prime in t such that I can also perform the action alpha on the system t to get to state t prime and s prime and t prime are also related by the, the relation. And so this is one of the, the by simulation conditions and uh, the other one is the, the mirror image of this. So uh, by simulation relation is, is um, symmetric in this way. So this is what it means to have a strong by simulation between two labeled transition systems. So okay, so I've told you a bit about by simulations. So the next thing is I should link it back to the, the previous work that, that Bryce and I have done. Um, but to sort of to do that, I need to tell you one more thing about by simulations, which is this notion of functional by simulation. So this is going to relate to the, the lenses that Bryce and I told you told you about last year. So a functional, so this is my terminology. There's a number of different names for these things in the literature, uh, including the ones listed on the bottom of the slide. So a functional strong by simulation is a function f from s to t whose graph is a strong by simulation. And the reason why we're interested in these is the description is a bit simpler. If you unpack what the by simulation conditions are, one of them simplifies uh, because the relation is the graph of a function. And the point is that actually every, every uh, by simulation can be represented as a span of these functional by simulations. And the, the relationship between the spans and the, the by simulations is the same kind of relationship between just ordinary relations and ordinary spans of functions. So if I have a span of functional uh, by simulations, then regarding them just as functions, I can take their product pairing and then take the, the set image of the product pairing and that gives me a relation from S to T, which turns out to be a, a, a by simulation and going the other way, if I have a relation from S to T, then I can compose the injection with the product projection and that gives me a span and uh, uh, David has a question. Okay, strong is, so in a, later on in the talk, I'm going to talk about a notion of weak by simulation, which uh, involves this special silent action tau. So this terminology is coming from, sorry? Yes, yes, yeah. This is, this is, this is terminology from Milner's communication and concurrency. I mean, I'm not going to say a lot about the weak ones, but there's, there's a reason why I've made this distinction. Um, okay, so we have this, this way of viewing strong by simulations as equivalence classes of spans of, of uh, uh, functional strong by simulations is the, the point. And I mean, this is, this, is, this is well known in a number of different contexts where people study by simulations. So the, okay, so what's the, what's the connection to, to lenses? Well, I should first remind you what an enriched lens is. So an enriched asymmetric lens uh, between enriched categories uh, A and B consists of some data, so uh, function between the object sets, uh, some families of maps between the home objects, uh, and together this data should form an enriched functor. It also consists of a family of lifting maps, so for every object A of A and every object B prime of B, we should have uh, one of these lifting maps from the home object from F of A to B prime to this sum. So in order to form this sum, we need some additional assumptions on the base monoidal category. That's why we ask that it be a distributed monoidal category. So it has co-products and these co-products behave nicely with the monoidal product. So we have this data and the lifting maps should satisfy some axioms that make them compatible with identities and composites. And they should also be compatible with the whole maps in the appropriate way. So that's a whole bunch of data. I guess if you haven't seen this before, maybe that's not so helpful in giving you an idea of what these are, but maybe these examples will be helpful. So if we're enriching in set, then uh, set enriched categories are just ordinary categories. And the corresponding uh, enriched asymmetric lenses are the notion of delta lens, which uh, Mike and Bryce and I and others have, have told you about at ACT over the years. So these delta lenses were introduced by uh, Diskin and collaborators to, to model the um, uh, synchronized, sorry, yeah, synchronization or bidirectional transformations between systems. Um, so as another example, 
If we enrich in the category of weighted sets, we get the notion of weighted categories and weighted lenses. And these were introduced by uh, Paolo uh, Perone to, to, uh, in the context of categorical probability theory. Um, and so in some sense, when he defined these, that gave Bryce and I a bit more motivation to actually put out our, our general notion that, that encompasses these examples and a few others. So if you enrich in the, the, um, uh, the extended reals, so this is the enrichment base that gives you the Levier metric spaces, then the notion of enriched asymmetric lens that you get out is this thing called a weak submetry, which is something that people who study metric spaces know about. Um, so there's, there's, so I guess the point of this is there's a whole bunch of uh, examples of these enriched asymmetric lenses, uh, including uh, some that we're familiar with here and some that other people are familiar with. Um, and yeah, so this is, this is the, the, the notion that, that Bryce and I introduced last year. And so now I'm going to link this to what I just told you about labeled transition systems. So how does this work? So the first observation is that uh, A-labeled transition systems are the same thing as graphs enriched in the power set of A. So the power set of A is a, uh, is a partial order, uh, but you can view a partial order as a, as a, as a category. <laughs> now, on the previous slide, I was talking about uh, lenses between enriched categories, but it's not too hard to imagine how you can also define lenses between enriched graphs. Uh, and so we're, we're talking about enriched graphs here. So an A-labeled transition system is a power set of A enriched graph. The correspondence is that the set of states is the set of objects of the enriched graph and the transition relations correspond to the home objects in this particular way. So you can transition on alpha from S to S prime if and only if alpha is an element of the corresponding home object. So then the next part of the, the, the linking that I'm doing here is that the functional strong by simulations of A-labeled transition systems are the same thing as uh, asymmetric lenses between these power set of A enriched graphs. So if you compare the two definitions I've given here, uh, you should be able to do some pattern matching to see how this correspondence works. So we've got a function between the, the states or between the, the object sets and then we have some conditions that, that correspond. So, so the functional strong by simulations are the enriched asymmetric lenses. So the natural question to ask is, well, what if we want to drop the, the functional kind of condition? What, what are arbitrary strong by simulations in the enriched setting? And so that's what I'm here to tell you about today. So let's have a go at defining a notion of enriched by simulation. So one might think, okay, well, it should be a relation between the object sets. And uh, just like for the enriched uh, asymmetric lenses, we're going to need some morphisms between the, the HOM objects that encode this idea of uh, pushing like morphisms from one, one category to the other and, and, and back again. And you probably want these, these um, these morphisms to be compatible with identities and composites, and you can sort of work out what, what those conditions might be and so on. And at some point, when you get to defining composition of these things, you realize that this doesn't work. So I'm going to give you uh, a, an intuition for how this fails uh, in the set case. So imagine we're doing set and rich stuff, so, so delta lenses kind of setting. Um, I've got three categories. Uh, and uh, I've got uh, two, two of these so-called enriched by simulations, and um, I'm going to sort of tell you how, what, what they do. So suppose, first of all, that this, so in this particular enriched by simulation, this, uh, this state and this state are related, and the corresponding uh, putting to the right operation maps this particular morphism to this particular morphism. And then uh, for this by simulation, this state and this state are also related. And the pushing to the right maps this particular morphism to this particular morphism. So in the composite, uh, this state is related to that state. And this morphism should be pushed across to this morphism. OK. And then also suppose that 
in this, this relation here, this state is related to that state and this morphism pushes across to this morphism. And then in this by, sorry, in, in this, uh, by simulation, this state is related to that state and this morphism pushes across to that morphism. So in the composite, uh, this morphism should push across to that morphism. So the, 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 the issue here is that um, there's no uh, clear choice as to which morphism the composite should push. So if in the, in the composite, this morphism should go to both this morphism and to this morphism, depending on the path it took in the middle. And the data just doesn't, there's not, there's not enough room to be able to encode this in the data of this, this naive definition of enriched by simulation. So this is where, in a, a longer talk, I could have told you perhaps about enriched symmetric lenses. But in this talk, I'm going to focus on enriched by simulations and tell you that the solution is to actually, well, sorry, one solution to this problem is to restrict attention from arbitrary distributive monoidal categories to ones which are thin categories. So for enriched graphs, the appropriate base of enrichment is going to be sublattices, and for enriched categories, the appropriate base of enrichment is going to be quantiles. And so uh, the definition I've given here is essentially the same as on the previous slide, except because we're in these thin categories, the, the co-product becomes just uh, supremum. Um, and so, uh, and also because we're in thin categories, the compatibility conditions with identities and composites automatically hold, so I don't need to impose them uh, in the conditions. <laughs> so so this, is, this is the enriched notion of bi-simulation. Um, and it turns out that when we define, define things like this, the, they, they, they do compose. I mean, you can read through the proof in your own time, but I've, I've put it there on the slides. So if you wanna go back, you can have a look. Um, so yeah, so we have a notion of enriched by simulation and the point is, so as we've already talked about, uh, strong by simulation of A labeled transition systems is the same thing as by simulation of power set of A enriched graphs. So here's one that if I had more time, I would go through in more detail. So for, so in particular in communication and concurrency, uh, Computer scientists are interested in uh, labeled transition systems where there's a, a distinguished uh, action, which they usually call the silent action, which has a particular semantics. So the idea is this silent action is representing actions that happen internal to a system that an external observer can't really see what's going on, except in the way that how the internal change of state of the system affects the external uh, interface with the, the outside world. So imagine your you have a computer and sometimes your computer will present like a, a spinning box saying it's doing something and you can't do anything else until it's done doing its thing. And then when, when it's done doing its thing, maybe the interface changes and it'll allow you to do something else. And so you could sort of think of that as a bit like one of these silent actions. Um, and so the point is that when you, you want to deal with uh, systems with these silent actions, um, the notion of bi-simulation, because the bi-simulation is supposed to capture behavioral equivalence, so like a, a equivalence of different systems from the perspective of an external agent interacting with the system, you need a different notion of bi-simulation that accounts for the special behavior of this silent action tau. So on the enriched side, um, and you, 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 you're also going to get a, 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 a different, uh, you need a, a different notion. So the, the way this works is, well, if uh, an A union tau labeled transition system is a power set of A union tau enriched graph, you can do a change of base to make it a power set of A star enriched graph. So A star here is the free monoid on A, it's lists of elements of A. So you just send tau to the empty string and all of the elements of A to the singleton strings. And then if I have a power set of A star enriched graph, you can take the free enriched category on that enriched graph. And that gives you a way of viewing these A labeled, uh, the, these transition systems here as power set of A star enriched categories. And the notion of weak by simulation corresponds to the notion of uh, the enriched notion of by simulation of these power set of A star enriched categories. So that's, that's a second example of this, this notion of enriched by simulation. As a third example, in logic, so in modal logic, 
uh, people are interested in biosimulation of Kripke frames, and this corresponds to biosimulation of graphs enriched in the the, uh, the interval category, so the category with two objects and uh, one non-trivial arrow between them. So, so here are a few a few examples of of enriched biosimulations. So, going back to something I told you before, I said that. Uh, in the label transition system case, an enriched by simulation can be viewed as a span of functional enriched by simulations. So this is also true in the uh, in the enriched setting. So if I have um, so I can consider spans of enriched asymmetric lenses, and I can consider enriched by simulations, and the same relationship holds between the two. So if I have a, a span of enriched asymmetric lenses, I can uh, produce uh, an enriched by simulation by taking the the image of the uh, if I so I view the, the take the underlying functions I pair them together and I take the image um, and going the other way if I have uh, a, an enriched by simulation I can compose with the product projections I can then put some uh, uh, I can turn this this into an enriched graph by by uh, defining the uh, appropriate um, uh, uh, home, home objects, and then the, the projections will turn out to be spans of enriched asymmetric lenses. So here's a proof for one of the directions. I'm not going to go through it, but if you want to come back and have a look at it later, you can. Here's a proof for the other direction. So this is me just checking the, the, the fact that the things are by simulations or asymmetric lenses or whatever. And so some of you who are uh, uh, familiar with or with structures like this might think, well, okay, if I've got spans, then I can actually sort of form morphisms between spans and then maybe I have some kind of bi-category going on and similarly with relations. And so uh, in this setting, so if you put enough assumptions on the base category V, um, so I would say, locally completely distributive, which means that if you look at the slice, each of the slice categories is a completely distributive category. So completely distributive means that um, you have uh, uh, the, the co-products and, um, and the products just dis dis distribute over each other. Um, uh, and uh, so you want this for each of the slice categories. And this is equivalent to saying that uh, you have universal, you have pullbacks and universal, universal co-products. Um, anyway, so if you have the appropriate conditions on the, 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 the base category V, then you can form so-called proxy pullbacks of enriched asymmetric lenses, which allows you to compose spans of enriched asymmetric lenses. And so you can form this, this by category. And anyway, in this case, you can sort of upgrade this, this correspondence to um, a family of, of, of adjunctions between corresponding home categories, uh, which uh, actually turn out to be reflections. So that's kind of this split condition. So the, the right adjoint is fully faithful. And so this is called a, a local reflection. Uh, and I mean, you can go and find the definition of this in um, Charles Walker's PhD thesis. But anyway, I'm not going to sort of go into more detail about that. But that's pretty much where I'm going to end the talk. So in summary, so we've defined a notion of enriched bisimulation. It generalizes several other well-known notions of bisimulation. Uh, we have this way of viewing enriched bisimulations as spans of enriched asymmetric lenses. Uh, and I guess, so the point was we couldn't define it for any distributed monoidal category, but these are defined for the thin ones. So either sublattices or quantiles. And some questions uh, for future research. So what are the bisimulations for other common quantiles? And I mean, more on that, are they things that, that mathematicians already know about, study, are interested in? Uh, and sort of going the other direction, uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of theory about by simulations from computer science and logic. And so, like, what, what parts of that theory can we lift up to this setting and maybe put into other parts of mathematics? So that's where I'm going to end the talk. Uh, thanks. <laughs>
Thank you very much, Matt. Um, so, uh, yes, we could play with that, although I'm getting the local microphone turned on for you so oh, that you okay. can. Okay. Uh, any questions now for Matt? Yes, indeed. Here we go. Uh, given the category C, we can define a category of relations by something, uh, mm, by taking terminal span, I believe, and taking sub-objects of that. And would that lead to by general by simulations or you don't know that or it or it would be different so i'm not sure i completely understand the question so you okay, said given a, a category of uh, rel in category c which right. is generalization of relations in sure sets. and the question was um would the, as you have that uh, correspondence between spans Yes. In C and by simulations. Sure. So if instead of taking uh, spans, you would take rel, would that lead to by simulations or would it be different? Um, so it's a good question. I'm not sure. So every so with the, the by simulations part, that was in the context where the um, so the, the so so the relations and the spans were in set. But the there was extra structure that was put on top of them to 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 uh, make them into enriched categories. So if you wanted to move from the underlying category being set to the underlying category being some other um, uh, some other category in which you can form one of these by, by categories of relations, then I guess you'd need some notion of uh i don't know may, maybe you could do internal categories there or something and you could do a similar thing i'm not sure but uh i think from the context of what we're talking about i i like i think it's a bit of a step away from what what i've been talking about does that kind of make sense i'm not sure if i've like we can look at it further later yeah maybe uh, other questions um can we have one from online, please? Uh, yes. yes. Can we go ahead, Valeria? Thank, thank you, Matt. Kind of nice talk. Um, I, I, I have a, a question about, have you heard about James McInnes' um, paper in 2016 or 15, which was exactly about um, uh, enriched by simulations being that bidirectional transformations? So, you know, uh, I was wondering whether that connects how is it connects to stuff because it looks very similar to me i would be very interested in seeing this paper it's quite possible i already have seen this paper and i'm not drawing the connection in my mind at the moment but mm -hmm. maybe if you could uh i can certainly send it to you later on kind and of sense if you can send me an email with the link and i'll definitely have a look and then maybe once i've seen the paper i can actually give you a yeah. better answer to your question but it sounds very interesting and i'd love to see it thank you yeah i mean so it's, it's all related somehow right it depends on how you pick up your definitions and stuff so yeah i'll do that thank you so much thanks valeria thank you for raising it valeria uh, another question from inside the room uh hi yeah um so i was in the game comonads adjoint school group last week and i was just wondering so um you sort of are saying that you can recover a full by simulation by looking at spans of these functional by simulations. And I just kind of noticed a seeming similarity of like, there's this uh, Aaron Foyt Frasa model comparison game. And to recover the like back and forth version of this game, you look at spans of these things called open pathwise embeddings. Um, I was just wondering, like, it seemed very uh, kind of similar to me. I was wondering if you knew anything about uh, that project and like if there's a relation. Sure. So it sounds like it probably is very related. I think, I mean, I, I, I can't say I'm an ex expert on the, 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 the game kind of stuff. I'd love to learn more about it. But if I, my naive understanding is that there's, I think there are connections with between by simulations and game things, and there probably is some connection between what you said in this way of viewing by simulations as spans of functional ones. So yeah, I mean, I'd love to love to know more about that, but it's not something I know uh, a lot about. But thanks for the question. 
I have to say these have been a perfect set of questions because we've raised more things to think about and different people are going to talk to one another more, but our time has expired. So can we thank Matt again? Um, here it's a coffee break.